Hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, so this interview, just so everybody understands, uh, it is an interview with a member of our barony in the Barony of Rising Waters. It will be posted to our YouTube channel uh, and be available for everyone to watch. So to get started, what is your name? So I am Baroness Skaya Inyan Konech. Uh, what is your position within the barony? I'm currently the territorial baroness for our barony. And, and what does that position entail? Um, so as territorial baroness, I am a member of the royal household um, of their majesties. And my responsibility is uh, to represent their majesties' interests in the barony. Um, I have a charter that their majesties signed um, that gives me the rights to hold the lands, um, to collect fees on uh, bridges as tolls um, in our port as well. Um, the fees are not usually monetary. <laughs> At this point, they're I've entirely virtual. But in terms of real responsibilities, um, I act as an advocate for um, baronial members uh, to their majesties and to the broader kingdom as well. I also represent the interests of their majesties. So during this time, when um, their majesties and the Privy Council are making decisions regarding events during the pandemic, part of my role is ensuring that our barony complies with that and supporting the seneschal of our barony, um, Baroness Gemma Krasina Nikova, um, in ensuring that we are compliant. Which is very important, especially right now. We want everyone to stay um, safe. Stay safe, but still stay involved. Yeah. And, uh, and play the game as well as we can. Exactly. Uh, so when did you join the SCA? I joined the SCA, and I, I don't remember the exact month. It might have been around March or April, somewhere around there in 1996, when I was uh, serving on the West Coast in the Canadian Navy. There was a, a demo being held at uh, Canadian Forces Base Esquimalt, um, okay. And I could hear the wax of the shield and swords from across um, the area that I was in. And uh, me and a friend, my friend and I walked over and had a look and they had a tent set up, a pavilion set up, and they had demonstration um, display screens. They had a beautiful gown on a dressmaker's dummy. And of course they had what on the East Coast we call a list or an Eric but here in Eldermere, we call it a list. So occasionally I'll say, yeah, it's over by the Eric. That totally lets people know that I am originally from Ontier. <laughs> <laughs> One of those little I hits. do know it's called a list. <laughs> Why did you join the SCA? Um, well, like many people in the SCA, I grew up reading sci-fi fantasy, Mercedes Lackey, um, Elizabeth Moon. Elizabeth Moon, two of her books, she actually has characters in them that are in the SCA. Oh, wow. She, she mentions Pensac War in one of her books. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, so having read a lot of sort of romantic medieval themed fantasy books, the idea of being able to put a medieval gown on and there's fighting going on, and eventually I put armor on and was authorized as a fighter in Ontier, um, and then trying to do archery, some of it, it's really escapism, similar to reading sci-fi fantasy. Um, and when I finished my work with the Canadian Navy, I went back to university and studied medieval history. So it's kind of, you know, influenced my real life as well as my not so real life. So you went back to school um, and it was influ your decision to go back to school and what you would study was influenced by the SCA. It was, yeah. That's interesting. So... Within the SCA, uh, our members typically will develop something called a persona. Uh, what is your persona? So Skaya is from uh, approximately 1270s, um, from uh, Southern Scotland, the Lowlands. Um, I specifically chose that area because my family is from that area. Um, I don't know if they're from that area as far back as the 13th century. Um, but I chose that particular time because Scotland was politically in a good place. Um, and it was a moment when 
Norway and England and Scotland were sort of contesting over Orkney, but Southern Scotland was in a position of some security. Um, Scotland was in, was reigning under Alexander the Third, and uh, there was a very strong merchanting center in Strathclyde in that area, um, including Irish merchants, English merchants, Scandinavian merchants, French, um, German, and so it was a it was a good time and a good place to be. A nice moment of peace. Yeah. <laughs> so you did answer this uh, about what went into your decision to to choose your persona obviously you you mentioned uh your family uh was there any other reason that you were that you chose specifically skaya uh, as the name skaya yeah. so skaya and it's s c i a t h but you just you don't say the t h part and everybody says it that's okay <laughs> <laughs> um i chose skaya because moira was already chosen <laughs> Um, I had already chosen Moira, and um, someone else in a the local group I had joined, the Barony I had joined in Ontario, mm -hmm. they already had the name. In order to avoid confusion between me and the other person, um, I I was on the search for other names, and I came across Skaya, and uh, the way the Herald described it to me, they said uh, it's like Sky, ah, oh. and I thought oh, that sounds lovely. It is name. a lovely name. And it's simple and it's not too difficult to, to read and, you know, to say or hopefully to remember. Definitely. And uh, uh, especially for heralds and court heralds, uh, makes it easier if your name is pronounceable or easily pronounceable. <laughs> so in terms of within the SCA and your, and your history, uh, have you been recognized for any of the work that you've done within the SCA? Um, well, one of the things that I bring to my how I play in the SCA is um, you know go do it kind of spirit <laughs> and uh, to some degree I think that's part of the reason why I've been recognized um, for both service and for arts and sciences um, so I'm very fortunate to be a companion to the Order of the Laurel um, specifically for applied research so when I say I went back to school because I was doing stuff, research in the SCA. It was the persona development research I was doing. And it was because I, I wanted to enter competitions and I had to know about all the other pieces besides the date and my name and the location. I wanted to know what her house would have looked like, what kind of food she would have eaten, would she have had servants, what kind of material would her clothes be made out of, what kind of, you know, and so and so on and so on. It's like a, a rabbit, huge rabbit hole that a lot of us can fall into. And it, it's continued Most to lead me. fascinating parts. Well, and it, it's continued to lead me to asking more questions, you know. And I dabbled in bookbinding, and I've done some uh, stained glass, and I've done some leather work, and I've done some woodworking. And one of the things I found consistent across all of those things are binding agents. So it led me, to, well, what kind of glue was there available in the, in the medieval period? And so conducting experiments and finding out what kind of glues are available and doing etchant experiments with different kinds of metal and different kinds of chemicals. So eventually I got recognized <laughs> in applied research. So doing the thing, reading, doing the thing, reading. <laughs> um, and it, I continue to enjoy doing that sort of thing. From a service perspective, I'm very fortunate, fortunate to be a member of the Order of the Wayne. That's Aldemir's grant level order for service recognition. And um, a lot of that service has been around event stewarding, being an officer for our barony. So prior to being uh, our territorial baroness, um, I've also been a herald for the barony. I was principal herald for the Kingdom of Eldemir, um, in addition to um, holding a number of different positions in uh, organizing events and uh, running classes and, <laughs> and so on and so on. a lot of hats before you wore that hat. <laughs> yes, yes, one could say that, yes. And occasionally I wear other hats than this one. <laughs> yes, whatever the, uh, the situation demands. <laughs> That's exactly right. And I find as, um, as a territorial baroness, um, I really rely on um, communicating and coaching individuals, such as yourself, um, in terms of service, so that you can contribute to our community 
but enjoy doing it. That it's something you enjoy doing so that you're getting as much out of it as the barony does in the service you provide. Absolutely. I've witnessed firsthand uh, both your support uh, and your encouragement. And I, I, it's, it's valued. It's definitely valued and appreciated. So are you. We're the Mutual Self-Appreciation Society. <laughs> Our Mutual Appreciation Society. <laughs> uh, so since you've had so much experience within the SCA and you, uh, you have worn so many hats and you've done so many things, is there anything that you'd like to tell anyone who is just starting out in the SCA that you wish someone had told you? When I was new in the SCA, um, I had the unfortunate exper experience of um, being on the receiving end of some fairly negative, devastating feedback um, from a couple peers who had comments about what I was wearing. And it really hurt my feelings. <laughs> And I carried that, and we tend to call that something called peer fear. If you see someone with a shiny hat or some regalia that you recognize as, well, they're, they've been recognized as a master of something. Um, and I still sometimes have a little bit of it, but it's since becoming a peer and realizing that my role is truly not just ad advocating for individuals, but advocating for arts and science within the society, mm -hmm. um, my advice would be to reach out to individuals, think of them as individuals, rather than the group. I'm one of the peer. No, I'm Skaya. <laughs> and, and I hope that I present an, an approachable persona, personality, that individuals feel like they could talk with me. And even if it's what they might think is a stupid question, like what kind of glue did they use in the 13th century? Trust me, it is not a stupid question. There's a lot of interesting discussions we could have on that question. Um, I think that's probably the best advice that I could think of for a newcomer. People are individuals and the people you'll find in the SCA community are pretty representative of the people you'll find in the outside of the SCA. So we have very nice people, we have very generous people, but we have other people as well who may not be as nice or generous. <laughs> of course, just like any other organization or like the wider world. As exactly, you say. exactly. So um, have you ever felt that something limited you in participating in something in the SCA? Um, well, after serving in the Canadian Navy, I served on the HMC as Vancouver. Um, I experienced some hearing loss. Um, and more recently, I've, in the last couple of years, I confirmed that I am hard of hearing in both of my ears now. And prior to that, I had a really hard time hearing court. Um, sometimes it was like noise at the back of the room and people at the front of the room would yell, hey, everybody at the back of the room, keep it down. Um, but even, even with it quiet, I still had a really hard time hearing what was going on. Um, so I found myself moving to the front row I don't always want to be in the front row, though. Um, so I, I found becoming a herald really helped because it meant I was right there while everything was happening. Um, so that, that's how I coped with it. And even now, I still have some difficulty. Um, so I authorized fairly recently. When was that? February? That was February. <laughs> I authorized in rapier, in fencing. And um, I find with my mask on, um, I can hear when my opponent speaks loudly, um, but I can't see their mouth necessarily. Yeah, because so, of so I don't have that to help me to understand what they're saying if they're not loud enough. Um, so what I've done to try to, you know, communicate that I, I need it to be loud is I'm loud. Mm. So, and then I'll put my weapons, like lower my weapons and approach them so that we can talk much more closely so that I can hear what they're saying to me. That's been really helpful. Um, it's also helped me to identify other folks within our kingdom who are also hearing impaired in some way. Um, <laughs> the four of us actually sat at a table together. <laughs> we, had, we had a little bit of a, a hearing impaired party going on. Uh, I do know that there's also a, uh, a position within the kingdom uh, for um, sign language. Highland heraldry. Mm. Yes, 
at Silent Heraldry, um, the rule for the Kingdom of Eldamir is called Bonsign. Um, and in the society overall, uh, we're actually developing, um, I'm Clarion Herald as well. So I'm a society education herald. And part of my role is to support um, the education of heraldry across the society. And one of the things that's in development now is a broader umbrella of accessible heraldry. So sign heraldry, silent heraldry is the first step in that direction. Um, and we've been building support for that. And it's been fantastic. Um, it's not American Sign Language every single word. It's to get the general gist of what's going on, right? Um, but we're also looking at described herald heraldry for those who are um, vision impaired mm -hmm. as well. Um, and we're looking to support heralds who themselves have disabilities but want to be heralds. So it's one thing to support uh, accessibility in the SCA so people can come to events and enjoy them. But for those who want to provide service, we want to provide them with the support so they can do that too. Absolutely. I think that uh, uh, especially now, uh, the SCA has been very much focusing on inclusion and diversity uh, and making sure that people feel comfortable and are able to play the game that everybody else is able to do. Definitely. And recent events have made it even more important in our barony that we have representation in that particular area. And as you know, we have, uh, we have a post that we are looking to fill for our um, baronial DEI officer. Yes, we are. Uh, and I, I definitely agree that the, it is, it's an important position. Uh, and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what uh, the new DEI officer will be up to uh, and the changes that they might make or present. Uh, well, thank you so much, um, Your Excellency Skaya Inyan Kenneth, uh, <laughs> for spending or taking the time today uh, to answer a few questions that might come up for somebody who's new or even someone who's been in the SCA for a while. Uh, it, it helps us get to know a little bit more of our members, uh, especially those who hold positions. And if I can make one last comment. Definitely. If anyone is interested in knowing more about what being a territorial baroness is like, um, or baron, um, I know that all the land landed baron and baronesses um, are open to having people come to them and ask them questions. It's not a mystery, um, certainly not. There's a lot of work involved, and I'm more than happy to share my experience with people who are interested in learning more about this role. Well, thank you so much for doing that. I'm sure that in, uh, in response to this, that you will definitely hear from people who are interested. Great.